Well, good damn afternoon, Americans. Uh, Jericho Green here with you once again, people. Make sure you get in the description box. Hit the link to my new channel, Green's House. I sit down with amazing people who have an interesting story to tell. And I need you to like, subscribe, and share that shit. We're almost at 3,000 subs. Thank you very much. Let's keep the party going. People, <laughs> who is still trying to pull the racial wool over our eyes? Who is still trying to get their juicy on? I'm talking about Juicy Smollett. He started something. He started a ripple effect, and it hasn't stopped yet. My goodness. So this time... It's the women of Utah, the Utah women's basketball team. In late March, I guess they were in Idaho to play Gonzaga. And some of the team members were out on the town. They were at some restaurant. And they leave the restaurant and they say that somebody in a pickup truck with a, with a Confederate flag in the back was yelling racial slurs. Come on. Pickup truck, Confederate flag. You smell that? Yeah, that's bullshit. Come on. So I'm going to read this article to you from NPR. You ever want a good laugh? You ever want to see uh, what the enemy is up to? Check out NPR. Not only do they have a website where they do stories, but there's NPR radio. That shit is crazy. It is Equal to, you guys ever listen to Coast to Coast with Art Bell back in the day? It's the equivalent to that. It is, you just sit back and listen to the craziest jaw-dropping shit you've ever heard in your life. Hold on a second, I gotta text my wife. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, it's the craziest jaw-dropping shit you've ever heard. Check out NPR for a good laugh. But this right here says, police investigating racial harassment of NCAA women's basketball team in Idaho. Dun, dun, dun. Listen to this shit. Police in Khalil D. Aline, whatever, Idaho, and the FBI, the FBI are investigating after a team in the NCAA women's NCAA women's basketball tournament said they were racially harassed while staying in the city. Now, this could be true, but if it is, how come we haven't heard of it? You mean to tell me you got some pickup truck driving Confederate flag waving son of a bitch yelling at a bunch of women of color? And we haven't heard about this. This hasn't been everywhere. This hasn't been tied to Trump somehow. Members of the University of Utah women's team told police someone in a truck displaying a Confederate flag yelled racial slurs and revved the engine in a menacing way. Because oh, there's, there's different ways to rev an engine. You can rev an engine, rev the engine because maybe your carburetor's bad. You got to give it a little juice. You can rev the engine to impress a girl. You can rev the engine to a guy next to you at a traffic light because you want to race. You can also rev it in a menacing way to, I guess it's a different pitch. It's a different octave. Can you, can other things other than singers have octaves? Maybe it's a different decibel. There's the showing off, the challenging, the keeping my car going, and then the menacing decibels. Got it. In a menacing way, as players and staff walked to dinner last Thursday, they said that same truck and a second were waiting as the team returned from dinner and followed them back to their hotel. Utah's team and the women's team from the University of California, Irvine, were staying in the North Idaho town to participate in the basketball tournament in nearby Spokane, Washington. It was really upsetting, said Utah head coach Lynn Rogers, and for our players and staff to not feel safe in an NCAA tournament environment, that's messed up. The NCAA is it, it, it NCAA says it worked with the teams and tournament site host Gonzaga University to get the team's extra security. 
Utah's team was relocated to a hotel in Spokane the next day. UC Irvine returned home Saturday after being eliminated from competition. I strongly condemn the appalling treatment of the female college athletes who are visiting the whatever you pronounce that town prior to the beginning of the basketball tournament in Spokane, said the mayor, Jim Hammond, at a press conference Tuesday. They're always they always jump to the this must be true. Oh, my goodness. We feel so bad. We're so ashamed. I'm, I'm so sad that this happened in our city. A few things here. Hold on. Let me finish up. The incident occurred in, in a part of the Pacific Northwest that was once synonymous with hate groups and has lately seen a rise in extremism, even among its elected officials. Um, Northern, or how Core De Aline, whatever, in Northern Idaho became known as a haven for extremism and racist groups in the 70s and 80s. When the Aryans, Aryan nation relocated its headquarters there, skinheads held parades in the 90s. Activity declined following a lawsuit, but two summers ago, 31 members of the white nationalist group Patriot Front were arrested there with plans to disrupt a queer pride event. You remember that? That was when you had what looked like a bunch of agents themselves speaking of the fbi they were in the khaki pants and the blue shirts and they were all piled in the back of a u-haul van and got pulled over what kind of keystone cop lemonade stand bullshit organization was that to get to be in the back of a u-haul truck and get pulled over anyway so there's a few things here number one who gives a shit number two even if it really happened okay you're with a group of your friends and somebody drives by in a truck with a Confederate flag and yells something at you. And that's newsworthy. That gets the FBI involved. That gets an apology from the mayor. If this even happened, if even if they were juicied. That is ridiculous. What happened to tough skin? What happened to sticks and stones? What happened to we are here for a bigger mission? We, we are, we're focused. Who cares about that? But no, the Federal Bureau of Investigation has gotten involved in this. I'm calling bullshit. I think it's ridiculous. Where's the cell phone footage? A group of college girls and none of them pulled out their cell phone to film it? They said the truck came back. In another article I read, they said there were 100 people in the area. Nobody pulled out their cell phone to record that. Nobody got the license plate. Nobody has footage of the truck speeding off. None of the girls have their phones out. You mean to tell me there's a college girl out there who does not have her phone surgically grafted to the palm of her hand? Let me tell you something I saw today. Again, I'm. Uh, that's why the beard is, is so scruffed up, so scruffed out, is because I'm not shaving until I drop 50 pounds. So here's something else with that, uh, having to do with that. So I have an event coming up in Vegas. The, the beard's scruffy, but I want to clean it up a little bit. But I don't. I said I wouldn't cut it till I dropped 50 pounds. So I think here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to compromise. I think I'm just going to edge it up here, just you know, right there, and then clean it up under here. That's it. Because I want to look somewhat presentable, being that I'm in, invited to an event. But I, I still don't want to shave my beard until I drop 50 pounds. And I don't even know how much how much weight I've dropped yet. I haven't checked, but I'm sure it ain't 50. But uh, so that's what I'm going to do to compromise with that. But anyway, part of what I'm doing, aside from eating better, is being more active. So what I do every morning, you could check, I upload a quick 10, 15 second video when I walk out my front door, basically saying, hey, it's 6.30 in the morning. I'm up. I'm here. I'd rather be asleep. This sucks, but I'm doing it anyway. So what I noticed walking around early in the morning between like 6.30 and 7.30 in the morning, I'll walk a couple miles, is you're, you watch the world wake up. You're watching people. You see people driving by, going to work with their coffee mugs, eating their, their breakfast or whatever, and their trucks and their company vehicles and all these things. You also see kids at the bus stop. So around 7.15, the high school kids are at the bus stop. So I walked by one of the bus stops today, and I counted them. There were eight high school kids at the bus stop. They were all spread out. I don't is if am I am I that old to where people used to stand closer together at the bus stop? And the reason you stand closer at the bus stop is because you were talking to each other. These kids were all spread out, 
and they were all on their phones. Even the there were two of them that were standing next to each other. They were on their phones, but everybody else was spread out at least 10 feet in between them. And they're all on their phones, heads down, staring at their phones. This is what young people do. This is what some adults do. So with that being the case, you happen to have this group of girls. None of them had their cell phones out to catch this. But we're supposed to believe that Boss Hogg was in Idaho in his pickup truck and his Confederate flag just a waving in this crisp, clean American air, yelled out racial slurs. They didn't say what they were. They didn't say were the N bomb or anything else. They just said racial slurs. What the fuck is that? This is nonsense. This is bullshit. We're raising a generation of overly sensitive people. This is not newsworthy, and it certainly shouldn't be on the radar of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. What say you? Meet me in the comment section. But you know how it goes. I try to be done with the left, but they just won't let me. Please subscribe. Hit that notification bell because every time it rings a piece of shit, lefty cries. Utilize the link tree link. Get over to that description box. Like I told you, hit the link to my new channel, Green's House. I am Jericho Green. And man, I'm out.